Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So tonight we've got a few requests for to review a few things we've covered before, and then we're going to uh, we're going to talk over hands. We're going to talk do some some play with around with that, and uh, um, so let's let's begin with the, some of the the requests. First one was to uh, a review of the. Uh, process for sedating the triple warmer meridian, which has effect of calming everything down. And it, uh, and when that happens, it actually elevates the spleen chi uh, by, by actually reducing the, uh, the triple warmer chi because they kind of are in, uh, they're paired up. So, um, the, what we're, we're basically doing is using our hands and breathing to take the energy backward in the meridians. So we begin with the uh, fingertips on the forehead. So right there at the center of the forehead and you press in and you wanna feel your fingertips pressing in on the forehead. And then you take a, a deep breath and as you exhale, you drag your fingertips across your forehead, continuing to press in around to your temples. Ideally, you breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Inhale. And drag your fingers above the ears, behind the ears, down the neck to the backs of the shoulders and press in. Inhale. And as you exhale, bring your hands down around and to your heart. Okay, and again, breathe in, press in and exhale. Drag to the temples. Inhale above the ears, behind the ears, pressing in all the way down the neck, down to the back of the shoulders. Press in, inhale, and exhale. One more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, press in, exhale. And just hold that for a moment and breathe. And just feel the calmness that that brings. This is great anytime you're feeling wired up, stressed out. You want to hmm, calm it down. It's a, it's a handy little thing. Three breaths and you're, uh, or three times through and you're, and you're off to the races. Okay, so the uh, next thing was um, from the uh, reclaiming lost territory set the uh, opening the jade pillow gate so just to um, refresh your memory the jade pillow gate is is technically these points right here at the base of the skull but we're focusing on the space between them this area right here where the spine enters the in, enters the cranium it's the um, uh, the medulla oblongata, or not the medulla, it is the medulla oblongata, is the part of the brain that is right behind that. It's the uh, foramen magnum is the big hole there where the, uh, where the spine enters in. But this is also a major energy gate. And this is what controls the chi going into the brain and also out of the brain. And so you're, it also, uh, Opening that up, it allows you to access the 
spirit of vitality, the Jing Shen. And um, so whenever you you do whenever you do open that up, you uh, you feel the uh, this this spirit of vitality throughout the whole system. And the more you practice it, the more it is translates into uh, spiritual power. And um, so we want to do that. We throughout the um, the our practice, we want to reach up with the with the, the crown of the head. Okay, reach up with that and open the jade pillow gate. But uh, there's a little bit of correction that's needed for most of us, myself included, and that is to because um, the muscles tend to tighten up and and we tend to get they get short there. So we want to open that up and stretch those muscles a little bit to make it a little easier to to open the gate. So the uh, using that as your pivot point, you can actually put your finger in there for the for the moment and and just you want to lift the chin and then drop it and feel that lengthening the the muscles and tendons in the back of the skull, back of the neck, and you want to pivot from that point. And we're actually retraining ourselves to to learn to pivot our heads from that point because there is a lot of a lot of us pivot down here and we want this is the way it's designed it's designed to pivot from the atlas so raising and lowering the head from that point allows you to remember how to carry your head in the way it's designed so that's the um, uh, that's that opening the jade pillow gate. Um, we had a request for a, uh, a Qigong of the season. So um, maybe we'll do that in a little bit. First, I want to talk to you a little bit about hands. Um, had a request a few weeks ago to, uh, to, to talk about that hands as an expression of, uh, of your energy, but also hands as a way of generating chi. So there's, a, there's a, a substantial and an insubstantial aspect to this. And um, so uh, actually Jonathan just joined the, the meeting. I say uh, a couple of years ago, Jonathan asked me uh, like, you know, how often am I aware of my hands? This a couple of years ago, so I was saying like, well, actually, pretty much all the time, there's an awareness, and and it made me realize that that's not true for everyone. That that, and particularly, yeah, I, I see people when they're doing a form and stuff like that, the hands are dead, and if you want to complete the circuit, you have to bring it all the way. To the fingertips, the um, the classics they talk about the hands are are an expression of your shen or your spirit. So if you if your hands are limp or lifeless or are not really participating in in the activity, then it's the spirit's not making the full journey. Okay, so. Uh, Master Chen used to uh, he used to emphasize it by saying it's like like you're giving someone a hundred dollars. You're going you, you, you reach out with the fingers as you do that. It's like you're extending that the uh, that out there. It's like oh no no I'll take it away. Uh, oh here it is. So there's a there is a reaching quality to that. So in the hands we want to. That you want to have that feeling of reaching as we extend out and open up. So that's the uh, that's the yang part, right? That's the extension outward. The yin part is the hands as a recipient of the chi that is in your body. And many times you'll hear me talking about feel into your hands, feel the pulsing, feel the tingling, feel the feel the sense of fullness. 
And that's the yin part. That's where the hands are receiving energy from, from the, the whole body. So you get this whole body energetic connection. But if you don't have the hands involved, consciously feeling the hands, you're, uh, you're missing out, missing out on a big part of what is possible there. And um, if you don't complete that circuit, it's not really a, a wholeness there. So the hands are, as a, on the yin part, it's, they're the best barometer that I've discovered for, do I have a whole body energetic connection or not? If I feel the tingling, pulsing, fullness, movement in my hands, then yeah, I'm connected up. How, how well am I connected up? Well, that there's infinite gradations of that. But if I have, if I have that feeling, then I, I know that, that I got, I got juice. I got that the whole system is moving. If I can get both hands, I'm feeling into both hands. Whoa. Then something really cool is happening. Not only is there a whole body energetic connection, but I'm also getting into a left right hemispheric synchronization as well and that's even cooler so now we're getting into whole brain coherence so the things are happening on multiple levels so every time you bring your awareness to your hands and feel not just think about but actually feel into your hands and you can just you know put fingers together, you can just wiggle your fingers, whatever, just something to just to help you get started with that. Start training your, your, your brain to be able to connect up to the afferent neural network, your sensory neural network. That every time you do that, you have the opportunity to move into that super conscious state. How deep you go, that's your, you know, depends on your commitment to the to the process, how, how deep you're willing to to let it take you. But it is it is a way of waking up every time you do that. So the uh, many of you are introduced to my work with the, you know, with the idea of pointing. And the only way that pointing works is if you feel the finger. If you point, reach, there's an intention there. So what are we doing? We are completing the circuit. There's something very special about the index finger, you know, which is a whole other conversation, but, but it's something that, you know, I've tested it out with thousands of people and it's like, yeah, it works. And uh, what makes it work? That, that connection that where you get, you, contact the afferent neural network, waking up parts of your brain that have been asleep. And when you do that consciously, then you are not only connecting bilaterally, but you're also connecting at the different, um, there's a vertical thing there where different levels of, of brain activity are happening as well. So cool stuff is happening at the physical level at the energetic level, we produce a state of heightened energetic coherence whenever we do that. The whole system comes online and, and becomes more powerful. You become integrated and everything seems to work a little bit better. Uh, any questions so far? Stan. Uh, you're on mute, mute, Stan. Unmute, Stan. Okay, uh, on the reaching, uh, you, when you reach in, uh, in the end portion, I understand that. But when you're uh, just feeling your hands, uh, did you stop that reaching for that point in time? You can. And then go. It's, you can do a yin and yang. In other at words, the same time. Or alternately, or whatever. So in other words, the reaching is is a, is a yang extension. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. if you just feel, the feel is the is is afferent. That means that 
energy is coming toward me. Okay, motor is energy is going out. So whenever I'm reaching, that's a motor activity. That's a yes. conscious motor activity. That's a an efferent neural pathway. So uh -huh. and reaching in is is yin. It's 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 afferent. It's sensory. So being able to control both of those consciously is transformative. Hmm. Yes, thank you. Cool. Anybody else? Any other questions? Thoughts? Okay. All good? All right. So moving on. Um, we'll get back to hands whenever we do some of this stuff, but the uh, getting the uh, having that included in everything you do so that when I say that I'm aware of my hands, but not thinking about them. So there's that the distinction I make between consciousness and awareness, where consciousness is where you're focusing awareness on a specific point. You're narrowing the focus so that you're saying, oh yeah, I am conscious of my hand now. And so that means I'm thinking about it or, or at least bringing it to mind. Whereas awareness means that in a super conscious state, I can be aware of lots of things simultaneously. And I don't necessarily have to think about them. I don't, um, so that I'm able to actually control a wide variety of, of systems and, and actions, behaviors without, uh, uh, without thinking. So you move beyond thinking. You're able to think if you need to, but but you're not limited by that. So whenever I say awareness of my hands, it doesn't mean I'm saying, oh, hands, 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 hands. It just means that, yeah, there's, there's some part of my awareness is, is allowed to alight there and uh, be able to, to feel into that. So I'm using a different part of the brain. So um, let's do... Uh, Let's do a Qigong and uh, in keeping with the season as requested. So the season being governed by water and kidneys and bladder. So we're going to be getting very watery. So step out. Feel your three pillars, feel the balls of your feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach up with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Tuck into chin. Elbows rounded. Reaching out slightly. Fingers, feel your fingers. In particular, your index fingers. Activate the energetic coherence. Relax your lower back so that your, your coccyx is reaching down, the Wei Lu point is reaching down so that there's a, a, a pull in opposite directions. The Wei Lu is dropping, the crown is reaching. So we're having this opening of the spine, allowing the cerebral spinal fluid to flow more freely, lengthening the dural tube. Opening the space between the vertebrae. Allow yourself to pause and feel into the fluids in your body. Allow yourself to become aware that you're about 70% water. Feel the blood circulating. 
Feel the effects of the blood circulating in your hands. Feel the tingling, pulsing. The microcirculation as the capillaries are opening up and extending into even deeper into the cells. Now forward slightly and gather. Reach with your elbows, reach with your fingers, carry. Sink. Simultaneously reaching with the crown, opening the new one. Palms down, sink. Feel the viscosity of the space as your hands move through it. Feel the fluidity. Feel the blood, the lymph, the synovial fluid, cerebral spinal fluid, all these fluids moving through your body nourishing, eliminating waste. Bow forward and carry. Reach out. Reach forward from the waist, opening the spine as you do that. Sink. Hands come down. All the way to the feet. Feel your feet with your fingers. Feel your fingers with your feet. Hands come up, feeling your, your legs, your knees. Hips. Feel your spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, open. Feel, open the vertebrae, extending the spine, reaching with the crown of your head and sink. This time about six inches away from the, your feet, your ankles, your knees, thighs, hips, the spine, shoulder blades, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, open. <sighs> One more. Sink. This time a little bit bigger, about a foot away. Coming up.
Bring your hands over your navel. down. Just feel into the circulation throughout your body. Feel the water. And as you inhale, allow your abdomen to expand but also your back. Breathe in so that you feel the area in your kidneys also expanding. The whole pelvic bowl is filling with chi. Feel the area between your genitals, your hui yin. As you inhale, feel the chi filling the whole pelvic bowl, the dantian. Step in. Deep breath. <laughs> and disappear the chi. Empty it out. Feel yourself dissolving, like dissolving into a mist. Feel into the emptiness. Okay, grab a seat. Hmm. How was that? Good, 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 good. Any questions or comments? Okay. Deep. That was deep. Deep. <laughs> good. Very watery. Cool. Okay. Um, I would like to show you a um, something that I've just been playing with and um, as a way of, of tying in a lot of the stuff we've been talking about and a way that has, I believe, has a, a strong martial applications that so much so that I would say that if you're gonna learn one move that would allow you to, to have the core of, of what it is that I'm talking about, um, this, this, would be, uh, this would be a good exercise to, uh, to practice. I, just, I think it's, uh, it's very, very practical 
if you connect the dots and it doesn't work if you don't connect the dots. So there's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a real internal kind of, kind of thing, but it, uh, I think it's much more practical for, for most of us than, than, you know, breaking bricks with our fists and things like that. So it's a, uh, um, as cool as that might be, um, but this is, uh, so let me just show you what, what I'm talking about here. And it's a very simple exercise. We'll do, do it on the, uh, with the right foot forward for now, but uh, just watch for the moment and then we'll, uh, we'll get to it. So the idea here is you're Okay, so it goes like this, and it goes like this. What we're doing here is breaking it down, or to break it down, it's, it's, it's front leg, boom, like that, back leg, like that. Very similar kind of motions. Um, which if you connect the dots, like I said, you're gonna, it works like crazy and it allows you to amplify your effective power quite a bit. And in a way that is uh, very effective, but also kind of a cool move. And um, so the, the keys to it are your three pillars um and then there's elbow gin and energetic coherence which implies the idea that you're reaching so there is a young impulse here with the uh with the reaching so there's simultaneously a yin and a yang there the reaching is the yang point the feeling is the yin so we have the, the motor is the reaching out and the sensory is coming back. So you get, if you can get both those going at the same time, then you're, uh, you're off to the races. So um, let's, uh, let's walk through it and then, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll break it down a little bit. Okay, so. Um, Yes, uh, I'm trying to think if it's, it'd be better for me to turn away from you or to face you. Let's do it, be facing you to start and then we can turn around to, to explore. So the, uh, you wanna see what I'm doing here. So, so right foot forward, a bow stance. So the, the key to this, three pillars. Reach with the crown, feel the balls of your feet, Elbows, open the jade pillow gate, relax your lower back, quaw. So to begin with, you feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and reach out with the right hand. Now, at the same time, you're reaching down with the left. So, just pause for a moment and feel that. Feel the connection between the two hands there. You want to, back to the hands idea here. We want to feel into the hands. Okay, so, so we're going to set the right elbow. And as we turn, we reach with the thumb. At the same time, we're reaching out with the index finger. So there's a lengthening of the arm, even as the vector of the energy is going that way. So there's, there's two, two vectors here. One is going that way, and the other is going that way. You're hitchhiking this way, and you're pointing that way. Then you set the elbow again and rotate the forearm. 
this time reaching with the little finger as you reach out. So your weight is about 70, 80% in the right leg now. Left hand is reaching down. Elbows are reaching out. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and spiral down to the right. And as you do that, your left hand starts to come across. Set the left elbow. And as you turn to the left, reach the thumb, right hand is pulling down. So you set the, you set the elbow and you're reaching with the thumb, right hand pulls down. And then set the elbow again and rotate. Reach with the little finger and open. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right or left rather, spiral down to the left, right hand, elbow, thumb, reach with the index fingers. Turn, elbow, rotate. Feel that, that connection between the hands. You want to reach, feeling the tensegrity in the whole body. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Left hand. Elbow, thumb, right hand is pulling down as your left hand is coming up. Turn, elbow, rotate your forearm. Reach with the little finger and open. So you recognize this is a, a modification of a, a white crane spreads wings posture. Okay, so let me give you, I'll turn my back to you, you can follow along here. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Reach out, okay, set the elbow, reach with the fingers, the elbow, reach with the thumb rather. Turn, set your elbow again, rotate. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Elbow, thumb. Pull down, set your elbow again, rotate your left forearm. Okay. So the uh, Let's do it a little quicker. Let's just kind of follow along here. Okay, right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, turn. Okay, rotate, open. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Set the left elbow, reach with the left thumb. Elbow, rotate, open. Right ball, set the right knee. Right elbow, right thumb, elbow, rotate, open. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Scott wants to know where the weight is. Okay, right now. So whatever, this is the, whatever I'm like this, the weight is in the, uh, the front leg, the right leg. And then whatever I, left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. That means that the weight, the left leg has become substantial now. Spiral down to the right and then turn to the left, left thumb, rotate. Left leg is about 80%. Now right 
right ball set the right knee spiral down to the left right leg is becoming substantial and turn left ball set the left knee spiral right left hand left uh, left thumb rotate little finger so essentially the weight is on the the side of the arm that's going up exactly so so and you can see here so the the, the arm going up front weighted back weighted so what we have here we have ball knee claw spiral and the turn so I spiraling but the turn requires that I have released the claw first I set the elbow so now I have this connection this energetic connection here I'm reaching and then I rotate boom Saving the back foot, left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. I'm releasing the quad, getting sung quad. Set the elbow and, oh, hitchhiking here with the left hand. Rotate, boom. Okay, uh, any questions? Da, 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 da. So your hands are almost always always 180 degrees apart. I haven't really considered it uh, in the in those terms. I don't I don't don't know that that's true. Uh, Rick, it's very funny. All my years in musical theater has paid off because it just became automatic for me. The moment this hand came forward, I'm on the right leg. The moment this hand came forward, I was on the back leg. It was uh -huh. just automatic. It's Good. Bob Fosse choreography. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everybody. Okay. So, uh, uh, any questions or anything? So, all right. So let me show. Let me show you. So, what's the big deal? Does it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're we're doing the doing the hand stuff here. Oh, 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 Scott Valerie. Yes. Oh God, I forgot. What was the question? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> The feet stay in that uh, bow stance the entire time. They don't yes. shift. Okay. Yes. For 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 this for our purposes right now. Okay. We we can learn to take steps, but first we're just we just want to get one side, get the choreography, and get the uh, internals on it uh, right from the start here. And the uh, uh, it really helps if you got a partner to uh, to to test this on you, but. Uh, if not, you just use a wall or a lamppost or something and uh, to do it. But uh, to break it down so you can see each step of the way. So you want to see where the uh, where the application here is in this, because it's a, um, um, you know, I've been making a big deal out of it. And it, it's a pretty move, but does it does it work? So uh, dude, do you want to give me a hand here? Okay. Okay. Good. So the uh, the idea here is you want to get it so so that you're you're connecting the dots. So we're going to go right foot forward, right? Good. And so the uh, so I don't know if you've been able to practice this at all. So she has not, but she's just first time she's been doing this. So so the idea here is uh, right ball set the right knee. Good. Spiral down to the left. Good. So you're you're going to be turning to the right. So you want to spiral down to the left. So this set. So you want to set the knee back there, right about that. Good. So she's spiraling down at the quad. She reaches out with with her her hand. So she wants this to be uh, energetically coherent, to have tensegrity. So this this whole thing. If she doesn't reach with those hands, she doesn't feel into her hands. Then this is gonna this is gonna be nothing. So relax here, good. So she's reaching there, sets the elbow. So this is it's uh you're setting it. It's it's um, slightly uh, rounded, and and so here there's she's coming across and is reaching with her thumb like she's like she's hitchhiking. So she's reaching here with with her thumb. If she tries to push from me from the shoulder, ain't gonna work. 
right? So she has to reach her elbow toward me, point with her index finger, and then rotate. Now it works, okay? If she tries to, to push from the shoulder, got nothing, right? So elbow, she points and, and then reaches with the thumb. And I'm automatically uprooted. So, but that's, well, wait, there's more. So she then sets her elbow again and continues to turn. This time rotates and <laughs> reaches with the, the, the little finger. So the, we have coming up here, this is the uh, lung meridian on, on this. So this is metal energy. And then this is fire coming out with the, uh, with the heart. So we get from, from that, uh, from an energy standpoint, we got two different things. So she, she spirals down, sets the elbow and rotates the, reaches with the thumb. And she, if she connects the dots, I'm uprooted. Then she sets the elbow again and continues. Okay. I have to. And there's reaching down with this one. We're not going to get into that right now, but but this hand is pulling down. So not from the shoulder, but from the elbow. So <laughs> the uh, if you if you get it right, it it has an uprooting quality to it. Um, <laughs> I get it right. You got it right. <laughs> Score. Okay, so so we uh, then so when we get into to this position, right? So you're in the front leg, and you you've you've completed that. Okay, boom. There you go. Good. So this is you're reaching out here with that, right? This is rounded. So so it's kind of like a, a forward weighted white crane. These arms are they are really powerful whenever they're in this shape when they're connected up energetically. She has this connection here. So if you're just, you're just using that to, to, to just a, a quick reach with that, with that energy is, is, is a very powerful thing. So now we're gonna go the other way. And so you're, you're like this, right? And so now we're going into, we're gonna feel the ball of the back foot, the left foot spiral down and reach across with the, with uh, the, uh, the fingers and then set the elbow and rotate the thumb so that just that little bit has, has an uprooting quality to it. So she, she, if, she, she re, if she sets the elbow and reaches with the thumb, then this, is, this uh, has, a, has a, an effect of that. So you set there, you rotate that, you're coming up here. Good. Now you set it again, and this is key. Because some people say, yeah, well, I did it already. I set my elbow already. No, no, you got to do it again. Why? Because there's a primitive stress mechanism there that's going to take it back into the shoulders. So we want to we want to disengage the shoulders. We want to, it's like sung shoulder there. So here she sets the elbow again, and this time she's going to reach with her little finger and open that, that energy. And that is where she is able to, to uh, execute that. So if, I, if, if I'm doing it and she, you reach down here and so just a little bit, just a little bit, boom, you, you don't have to, it's not a big move. You just, you're able to generate a tremendous amount of power. You know, if we're going, if we're going this way, boom, it's a, uh, you're able to generate a tremendous amount of power with very, very little uh, muscular effort or very little motion. Least amount of force necessary to get the job. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so uh, any questions on that? Let's go back to uh, Rick. Um, for those few of us who are, who are not interested in knocking over our wives or loved ones, uh, is there an internal power, is there an internal health aspect to this that I should be aware of other than just the ability to throw Maria around? Um, 
the the throwing around of loved ones is is optional. Um, it's more for demonstration purposes to show that that uh, well, first of all, you know, I, I was pitching it as a as a killer martial arts move, and as is something where where regardless of, of our pacific natures, having the tools necessary to ex extricate oneself from trouble is yeah. a valuable skill and allows for a certain sang froid when one is uh, engaging in life's, <laughs> the vagaries of life. <laughs> so you can- <laughs> there's, not a, there's not a specific internal health aspect to this other than uh, just being right? It, it's, it's huge, huge. Every, it's, it, it ties the whole package together. It's a, it's, it's a whole system thing. You know, at, at the very least, you're working your, your lung and, and, and heart uh, meridians and, and, and doing cool stuff with them. But it's a, uh, but lots of other stuff. Yeah, uh, Valerie, you had something, or Scott? Yeah, just to, just to give Rick a, 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 a point here. Uh, one time I was driving back from skiing and I had my skis in the front seat with me and I took a turn too fast and the skis came at my head. <laughs> and I just did that without even thinking about it. Beautiful. So, yeah, you know, something could be falling off a shelf. It's it's a move to practice for. Yeah, it has practical advantages, but also the the health benefits. It's um, it's big G, big G, and it circulates well. <laughs> and, and you really well, feel a whole body connection with that one. You feel a whole body right. connection. Yes, Jonathan. Well, like I said, yeah, go ahead. Word about just you know moving from, with your finger and your thumb, because you can even with your hands at your side, you can turn your your elbows, rotate your wrists, and your your hand can be just a dead appendage to that movement. But as soon as you talk about a way to connect the elbow to the fingers, just take them with the ride, not just take them with the ride, but make them an integral part of navigating that turn is huge. I mean, huge, it seems to me, chi comes into you just by, with your hands at your side, direct, you know, being all in on the rotation of that wrist with the elbow, with the elbow fixed. Every right. time that you involve the direction, because the thumb is one direction and the, and the little finger's the other. Um, I guess my question for you though is, you can really play with the, I mean, okay, so the little fingers you feel on your way away from your body as you're turning, but the thumb is in there too, kind of, you know, in the, in, 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 in the, in the, in the last car there, and then the thumb takes over, but the, you don't lose track of the little finger either. I mean, it really just seems to automatically involve the whole hand, uh, feeling the whole hand in a, in a whole new sensory way. And I know this, this is, you're incorporating this in that, but it seems to me like we almost need a lot of practice just make, or not lean out of practice, you can do it all day. That way of practicing feeling the hand by rotate, by every time you rotate your wrist, even if it's at your side a little bit, even if it's a slight little turn, going all in with the fingers with the turn and the directions yes. with the turn, right? Yes, absolutely. And so like what, what you're doing there, Rick, is, is you're moving from the shoulders but you're not really setting the elbows. And that is really the key to this whole thing is, is you wanna set the elbow and rotate. So it's, so it's not just, okay, Rick, Rick. So it's not just moving like this, it's setting the elbow and rotating the forearm. Ah! So immediately, <laughs> So even more than energy, even more than its chi effects, is super consciousness. Yeah. It's a whole body, body, mind, spirit integration that is is mind blowing. And so really take the time to set the elbow and rotate the forearm. This is what Jonathan's talking about. It because otherwise you're just gonna the shoulders are just going to be moving at your it it's back the same old same old stuff oh yes i've done that before no this is new this is this is a, a very simple way of practicing some of these um 
these core principles that I'm talking about, it's very compact here. And even though it's a simple movement, you, you want to break it down into its, its component parts. And even just, you know, like what Jonathan was saying, even if you just do this, just set the arm and just set the elbow and rotate the forearm. Set the elbow and rotate the forearm. Boom. So that you, so that you're getting that. So, and, but not only that, but the reaching with the index finger, so that this becomes, the, you, you're feeling the tensegrity. Perfect, Sandy. That was that was gorgeous. What you just did there. Do that again. Do that again for the nice people. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, right there. So look at look at his hands there. See how alive those hands look. Okay, that's that's what we're talking about because that is going to fire up the whole system. So this is a very compact, compressed system here in this, this, this little, silly little exercise, but it is beyond, way, way beyond its practical value, which we haven't even begun to plumb the depths of. And I'm just showing you that, oh yeah, it, it has a lot of power, but you know, it, it's both offense, defense, it's, it's, uh, it's got all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with it. And it's really nice to have, you know, if you, even if just, you know, you want to, to say, have someone shoo away, <laughs> you know, you're just up there, just poof, and you're able to, to neutralize a much bigger person with, with, a, with, with a wave of your hand. It, it looks almost magical whenever you do it that way. So anybody else? Fun all day with your hands, you know, it's uh... <laughs> hand fun. Hand fun. <laughs> Nick. So it's not, not really a question, but uh, it's kind of a um, an amplification or a, a nice little extra people can play with if they want. Is when you when you rotate off the elbow, what axis are you using to think about that? The notion of reaching with each of the fingers, the thumb or the or the little finger, yeah. I played with this and I find a, a significant subjective uh, feeling. The experience is different. The notion of uh, having an axis from say the, the tip of the index finger to the elbow versus the ring finger to the elbow. You can rotate from the elbow around any one of your fingers, even your thumb mm. as the still point and it and it really it's just a fun thing to play with. It changes energetic, and for Rick's health concern, you get to mess with all five meridians in the hand that way. Beautiful, beautiful, cool. Okay, anybody else? Great. Well, let's uh, let's uh, call it a night. Uh, thank you all for coming.